Well, that's odd. It's normally capturing by now. There we go. That hasn't happened in a while. So... What did we do again? What were, um, 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 ah. Uh, right, we were, uh, we went down in the basement of the windmill, and I, I was like, oh, this is what the, this is what the, the puzzles in the briefcases were for, right? Um, and I think, I think, I think, I think, I think I remembered one of them, probably, because it looked like an M, kind of, and then the one we saw, like, an episode ago, or two episodes ago, I might maybe remember, you know? Um, uh, huh. Maybe not, maybe not, though. I'm not entirely sure. Because this is like, oh! Mmm! Oh? Oh! What the hell? Well, that's no better a solution than any of the others, is it? Is that Carl Sagan? So, in the end, have we learned anything from this look at why the world turned out the way it did that's of any use to us in our future? Something, I think. That the key to why things change is the key to everything. How easy is it for knowledge to spread and that in the past the people who made change happen were the people who had that knowledge whether they were craftsmen or kings today the people who make things change the people who have that knowledge are the scientists and the technologists who are the true driving force of humanity and before you say what about the Beethovens and the Michelangelos let me suggest something with which you may disagree violently. That at best, the products of human emotion, art, philosophy, politics, music, literature, are interpretations of the world that tell you more about the guy who's talking than about the world he's talking about. Second-hand huh. views of the world made third-hand by your interpretation of them. Things like that. Yeah. As opposed to this. Know what it is? Um, it's a bunch an of amino acids. Oh. The stuff that goes to build up a, a worm or a geranium. Or us. Or you. Ah. I know. This it. stuff's easier to take, isn't it? <laughs> Understandable. Got people in it. This scientific knowledge is hard to take because it removes the reassuring crutches of opinion, ideology, and leaves only what is demonstrably true about the world. Mm -hmm. And the reason why so many people may be thinking about throwing away those crutches is because, thanks to science and technology, they have begun to know that they don't know so much and that if they are to have more say in what happens to their lives, more freedom to develop their abilities to the full, they have to be helped towards that knowledge that they know exists and that they don't possess. Mm. And by help towards that knowledge, I don't mean give everybody a computer and say, help yourself. Where would you even start? He's going to say higher education, isn't he? Trying to find ways to translate the knowledge. Mm, no, no, no that's, that's a lot better. Questions. I'm going to answer as I was See, we're on the thinking. edge of a revolution in communications technology that is going to make that more possible than ever before. Or, if that's not done, to cause an explosion of knowledge that will leave those of us who don't have access to it as powerless as if we were deaf, dumb, and blind. And I don't think most people want that. This guy had a really so good predictive think. mind. I don't know. I don't know when this was made, but... but... A good start uh... <laughs> would be to recognize the ability to understand <laughs> Well, he has a point. Is there, as long as it's explained clearly enough. And then go and ask for explanations. Mm. And if you're thinking right now, what have I asked for? Ask yourself if there's anything in your life that you want changed. That's where the start. Wow. Written and presented by James Burke. Okay, so it wasn't Carl Sagan. The BBC? Ugh. Strategic Air Command? Okay, nice. That's interesting. I'm sure that was like in a in a museum at some point. I'm probably... Wasn't one of them like this? No, that doesn't look right. Or like, uh... 
No. I could have sworn one of them was basically a straight line. Like, basically that. Or it might have just, it might have actually just been that, you know? No, I guess not. Hum. Or are there, oh. Oh! That's interesting. Yeah. I think, no, let's just leave that at the end. <laughs> Can I, oh, oh, that is the solution for that one. Okay. Um, oh, 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 ooh, is there something like this, maybe? Or, or, um, I guess it might have gone around or so. And so, by a backhand, mm -hmm. upside-down argument, was predicted that there is in carbon a level at 7.82 million volts, and then experiments in the laboratory with carbon show indeed that there is. And therefore, the existence in the world of all these other elements is very closely related to the fact that there is this particular level in carbon. But the position of this particular mm -hmm. level in carbon... Carbon 12, to be specific. ...after knowing the physical laws, to be a very complicated accident of 12 complicated particles interacting. So I used to illustrate, by this example, that an understanding of the physical laws doesn't give you an understanding in a, a sense of a understanding significance of the world in any way. The details of real experience are very far often from the fundamental laws. There are, in a way of speaking, in the world, we have a way. Am I going to get? In the world, which you yeah, is this going to get taken down by the BBC? Hierarchies or levels. Now, I don't mean to be very precise. Uh, this there's a level, there's another level, and another level. But I will indicate by describing a set of ideas to you, just one after the other, what I mean by hierarchies of ideas. Mm. For example, at one end, we have the fundamental laws of physics. Then we invent other terms for concepts which are approximate, who have, we believe, the ultimate explanation in terms of the fundamental laws. For instance, heat. Heat is supposed to be the jiggling, and it's just a word for a, a hot thing, is just a word for a mass of atoms which are jiggling. For all that, fundamentally, we should yeah. think of the atoms jiggling. But for a while, if we're talking about heat, we sometimes forget about the atoms jiggling. Just like when we talk about the glacier, we don't always think of the hexagonal ice snowflakes which originally fell. Another example of the same thing is a salt crystal. Looked at fundamentally, it's a lot of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But we have this concept, salt crystal, which carries a whole pattern already of fundamental interactions or idea like pressure. Now, if we go higher yeah. up from this, in another level, we have properties of substances like refractive index, how light is bent when it goes through something, or surface tension, the fact that the water tends to pull itself together, is described by a number. I remind you that we have to go through several laws down to find out that it's the pull of the atom. This is going to be great during my dynamics exam later today. We're not worrying when we're discussing surface tension of the inner workings always. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Go on, up in the hierarchy. With the water, we have the waves, and we have a thing like a storm. We have a word for storm, which represents an enormous mass of phenomena. Or sunspot, or star, which is an accumulation of things. And it's not worthwhile always to think of it way back. In fact, we can't, because the higher up we go, the, we have too many steps in between, each one of which is a little weak, and we haven't thought them all through yet. Yeah. And we go up in this, yeah hierarchy of complexity, we get the things like frog, <laughs> or nerve impulse. I, that's only funny to me because I love frogs. In the physical world involving an organization My favorite animal ever since I was a small in child. very elaborate complexity. And then we go on, we come to things, words, and concepts like man, and history, or political expediency. Boo. Which is a series of concepts that we use to understand things at an ever higher <laughs> level. And going on, we come to things like evil and beauty and hope. Now, which end is nearer to the ultimate creator or the ultimate? And if I make a religious metaphor, huh. which end is nearer to God? Beauty and hope or the fundamental laws? 
I think that uh, mm -hmm. the right way not of course, is to say that the whole structural interconnections of the thing uh, is the thing that we have to look at. And that the sequence of hierarchy, that all the sciences and all the efforts, not just the sciences, but all the efforts of intellectual kind, Oh. Are to see the connections of the hierarchies is to connect beauty to history, is to connect history to man's psychology, the man's psychology to the working of the brain, the brain to the neural impulse, the neural impulse to the chemistry, and so forth, up and down, both ways. And today we cannot, and there's no use making believe we can, draw carefully a line all the way from one end of this thing to the other. In fact, mm -hmm. we've just begun to see that there is this relative hierarchy. When was this? And so I don't think either end is when here was to God. This end? And it's to stand at either end and to walk out off the end of the pier only, hoping out in that direction is the complete understanding, is a mistake. And to stand with evil and beauty and hope, or to stand with the fundamental laws, hoping that way to get a deep understanding of the whole world with that aspect alone <laughs> is a mistake. And it is not sensible either for the ones who specialize at one end and the ones who specialize at the other end to have such uh, disregard for each other. They don't, actually, but the people say they do. <laughs> <laughs> but that actually the great mass of workers in between connecting one step to another are improving all the time our understanding I, of the world. Both I honestly do the miss end this song. And working in the middle. And uh, in that way... We are I don't know, I think there is a, connection, a general understanding, well, I'll wait until world of interconnecting hierarchies. I'd... If you expect oh, the science to give well. all the answers to the wonderful questions about what we are, where we're going, what the meaning of the universe is, and so on, then I think you could easily become disillusioned and then look for some mystic answer to these problems. How a scientist can take a mystic answer, I don't know, because the whole spirit is to understand. Well, never mind that. Any, I don't understand. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, if you think of it, though, I, the way I think of what we're doing is we're exploring. We're trying to find out as much as we can about the world. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide yeah. what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. If you say, but your problem is why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question. You may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. But I don't look at it. My, my interest in science is to simply find out about the world. And the more I find out, the better it is. I like to find out. <laughs> uh, there are very remarkable mysteries about the fact that we're able to do so many more things than apparently animals can do. And other questions like that. But those are mysteries I want to investigate without knowing the answer to them. And so altogether, mm. I can't yeah. believe the special stories that. that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large, because... If he, would, if he did, it would ruin the science of it. Too simple, too, too, too connected, too local, too provincial. The Earth, he came to the Earth. One of the aspects of God came to the Earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he... It isn't in proportion yeah well anyway it's no use arguing i can't argue it i'm just trying to tell you why the scientific views that i have do have some effect on my beliefs and also another thing uh, has to do with the question of how do you find out if something's true and if you have all these theories of, of the different religions have all different theories about the thing then you begin to wonder. Once you start doubting, just like you're supposed to doubt, you ask me, is the science true? We say, no, no, we don't know what mm, yeah. trying to find out. Everything is possibly wrong. Start out understanding religion by saying everything is possibly wrong. Let us see. As soon as you do that, you start sliding down an edge, which is hard to recover from. And so when the, with the scientific view, or my father's view, that we should look to see what's true and what may, be, may not be true, once you start doubting, which I think, is, to me, is a very fundamental part of my 
soul is to doubt and to ask. And when you doubt and ask, it gets a little harder to believe. What I find somewhat you interesting see, is his incessant use of the word soul. Is I can live with bit, doubt but I and uncertainty I'll and not knowing. That. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything. And there are many things I don't know anything about, such as whether it means anything to ask why we're here and what the question might mean. I might think about it a little bit. If I can't figure it out, then I go to something else. But I don't have to know. This is a long answer. one, I don't, huh? have, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in a mysterious universe without having any <laughs> purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell, possibly. It doesn't frighten me. Fair enough. Um... Uh, what did I say I was going to talk about after that? I think, uh, that's what it was. Uh, around midway through, I was thinking about how he was talking about, uh, the difference, the, uh, just kind of simple concepts of the world, like evil and good and all of that, and, uh, fundamental laws of physics, and some people feel the need to force a choice where you're either on the side of these like uh, simple concepts or the fundamental laws of physics and there's like one end or the other and uh, which side is God closer to or whichever and um, uh, I forget where exactly I was going with this or where the connection tied in to where um, I I don't know if it's entirely died out or maybe there's just general polarization with the whole the whole deal, but I do, I do kind of miss the, a little bit, the, it seemed like there was a, a relatively strong concept among thinkers and scientists and religious figures that science and religion aren't mutually exclusive, and, um, you can, I, I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it like a, a, a response to, like, the Catholic Church burning Galileo or whatever, um, where am I trying to go? Let's just, uh, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll go back on land. I, I know I said I wasn't going to touch a boat for the rest of my life, and I did, and I'm sorry for that. But, you know, I did it anyways. What are you going to do about it? So, yeah, I do I do a little bit miss the, the there being some great prevalence to that kind of thinking, where, um... There's religion and there's science, and they're not entirely mutually exclusive. You can believe in a god and believe in scientific method and be a perfectly functioning and non-contradictory being, and there's not really a problem with that. I could have done this from over here. Okay, I feel a little bit silly about that. Um, uh, right, this is uh, this is where the first one is from. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I I don't even know when we did that, so I'm glad I didn't have to seek back through my own videos to find that. But um, oh, this is back in the beginning section actually. How did I never see some of these like uh, holograms or whatever? It it's uh I I think he loses me a little bit in the incessance for knowing as opposed to believing. Or, I guess, just the incessance at knowing in general. It's or, or the conflation of knowing with belief. Oh, this has got to be... Oh, come on. Oh, no, no, no. I see it now. That is interesting. Okay, I'm glad. Because this is what, the, the room I came out of? This is where I was born or whatever? It's probably a safe room to keep me away from the freaking Dr. Stone rays or whatever. Turned everybody to stone. But, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that, uh, I guess that's, that's the long and short of it. He loses me at the incessant set, um, the conflation of not, of, um, knowing and believing, I guess, because at least Christianity relies a fair amount just on faith, you know? You're not going to know everything, and, um, you probably shouldn't know everything, because that kind of takes... It takes quite a bit of the glory out of, out of, you know, being a god that's being worshipped by these beings that you've created. What glory is there in 
a bunch of things that know about you being like, I, I believe he exists, you know? If I, if I, if I'm like, I don't know, if I sit around and I'm like, you know, I believe that, um, uh, Bill Nye the science guy exists, that doesn't really mean anything. Now, I guess you could then get into, well, what does it matter, what glorifies you if you're God? Um, well, uh, I guess that's a question I don't really have an answer for. But I'm not afraid to say that I don't really have an answer for that. And I've never been one to be... I've never really been one to shy away from the idea that I'm not going to have answers for things. And that's not really all that much of a problem. But did I see a circle over here? Never mind. So... I don't know. I, I, I find that he seems to have at least enough of a... Well, I wouldn't want to be condescending to somebody that's probably, like, legitimately more intelligent than I am. Because that's, that's, he hits above my pay grade, you know. Um, I, 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 I suppose I will leave it with, I, I have a certain appreciation for not being so adamant about a lot of things, you know. I, I, okay, that looks like a circle. Hold on. I must have already done this, right? Um, because I think too many people have it where, I think I might have mentioned this before, that, like, I don't have a problem with agnostics, I have a problem with, like, outright atheists, because they, um, in the face of people that they claim to be making an unfalsifiable claim, make themselves an unfalsifiable claim. Um, now, by all means, I have no problem with the idea that there is an absence of something in the absence of evidence of something. Um, but there is a... Okay, I have done this already. It, it's the kind of deal where, like, um, it is it is still uh, a claim of something as opposed to just being like, well, I'm not so sure, you know. I'm not saying that everybody has to believe in a god, specifically not, like, not, nor specifically the god that I believe in, but, uh, I feel like I've been walking in circles. I probably should have taken the boat. <laughs> it, I, uh, I have, I have a hard time really having too much appreciation for the kinds of people that just... I guess I wouldn't say outright deny it because, you know, there's there's some degree of religiosity to outright denying certain beliefs, such as the belief in other gods other than the one that I believe in, you know. Uh, I don't believe that there are other gods. I believe that there is one god, you know. But that's... I'm not going to say that that's neither here nor there because I brought it up, but, you know, it's not as important as... Uh, I guess, <laughs> yeah, the, the real problem is the hypocrisy. You know, I, I'm not going to really get too far into that. I just want to go somewhere else. Uh, let's go here, why not? And uh, by the time the boat docks, I will end the episode probably. This has gone on for way too long. This is an extra episode. This is a bonus episode. We're going to have a couple bonus episodes before I really get back into the story of it. And I feel like I'm not properly, you know, um, talking about myself, you know. I think, I think that probably is what it comes down to. I mean, I really, I really don't like, personally, um, talking about things in a way where it's like, you know, the problem is the hypocrisy, because it's, it's, it's a little silly to harp on hypocrisy, because everybody, everyone's a hypocrite. But... Um, it, it's, uh, that looked like something, like the buoy lined up with that orange bit over there. Huh. Maybe. Oh, you know what? You know what I want to do? I want to see if there actually is a way to get into the ship. The boat's over here. I really want to see if that's a thing that I can do. So, yeah, let's just expand this video a bit longer. And, uh, I'll keep talking. Um, I think the difference with it, if you were to say that, well, I'm a hypocrite, actually, because yeah, I say that I can do it, but other people can't. Um, 
one of the tenets of Christianity is to some extent denying the existence of other godly beings or gods. I mean, it's like, that's commandment number two. Um, whereas, if you were to say that, like, a tenet of atheism is... Well, I guess it would be consistent with the ideology to say um, there is no god because atheism itself is the rejection of there being a god. I don't have a problem with that alone, only that uh, it, it seems to be in form something that considers itself to be a lack of ideology, I guess. I don't know if it's even that, really. It's like, uh... <laughs> I, I, I guess it, it really does... All it really comes back to is, um... I don't know. I don't have much interactions with outright atheists. They all seem to just be cynical about specifically Christianity. I find that American atheists are more... They're less atheistic and more anti-Christian. And... Um, I guess you could make the however fair argument that I'm probably just bitter about my interactions with some people being less than savory. Like, um... There was one time I was talking to a girl and, uh, I don't know, she said something about, like, the whole thing being silly or something, and I was like, well, you know, I just, I, I love the Lord, and, um, she went out of her way to say something like, uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, my dad owns land in Scotland, so that means he's a Lord, but I guess you're talking about the, the Sky Daddy, and I'm like, okay, you went out of your way to say that specifically to be disrespectful. Like, I'm not... I'm not outright calling you some some kind of idiot because you don't believe the same things I do. But that that right there and just kind of sitting there and taking that as a bridge too far for me. Because um, again, like you don't have to believe the exact things that I do. I don't have a problem with people that don't believe the exact things that I do because there are a lot of people that I believe a lot of different things. Um, but it, it's the, uh, it, it's, it's, it's just the, it's, 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 um, God, it's pain without understanding that they're in pain, I guess, is what it seems like to me. Like, at some point along the road, they were wronged, or they at least believe themselves to have been wronged, and their, their decision in being wronged was to simply be bitter about the whole deal, and... I mean, again, I said before that, like, it's a fair argument to just say that I'm, well, well, I'm just bitter about my interactions with these people that ultimately we just don't like each other. That's fine. You, you can say that. Now, this looks like something. The flowers keep making patterns. And that's actually the first one that's culminated into a, a puzzle, so that's nice. I like that. I'm going to try not to think too hard about all of the other ones also doing that. But they might. They might. Uh, maybe. Anyways. I just, I really want to find the boat and then we'll start the next episode. Because, um, this is probably going on too far. Too long. Too long. Too long of an episode. Um. But, uh, it, it, it's the, it, it, I guess it's the, the bitterness without knowledge, I guess. Or not even that. I mean, again, uh, I don't, I don't have too much of a problem with the the guy that'll be like, you know, my my Catholic priest touched me when I was a little boy, so I don't believe in God, you know, because I, I don't, I don't know how to really talk to that person. Uh, yes, you were wronged by a religious leader, and that's terrible. Um, I should hope that it doesn't affect your relationship with God, but I, I can see how it would. But, I mean, I don't know if those people typically end up becoming the terrible cynics, you know? Oh, hey! Cool, let's completely segue off of the... You know what? Okay, this is a 30-minute episode already. We're going to start the next episode with this, and I'll talk about whatever's in this, because I think we've talked about this for long enough. So, yeah, whatever. Science is cool. Religion is cool. I love God. I love science. I have no problems at all with my faith, um, because it's faith instead of knowledge. I've, I've long maintained that I don't really know all that much, specifically not about God, but I've never held 
the belief that I need to know anything about God. I would like to know things about God, but I'm not going to. And I haven't been told that I will, so it's not really much of a problem for me. Anyways, on the next episode, we're listening to this. Till then, like, comment, and subscribe, or I will condemn you to hellfire damnation for all eternity! Yeah. Goodbye! Yeah, I hope that one. I thought it was pretty funny.